Mm. Can I so, ask you, can I ask a question? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, because you said something, you said, I'm not going to uh, tell her not to go to college. Mm. Why do everyone believe that housewives don't go to college? Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's everyone that believes that they don't. I'm just, I guess that's what he- I always, I, I always hear that. I always hear that. I always get that. Like um, a lot of men, you know, when they find out a woman has gone to college and it's like, oh, you can't be traditional. You can't be a housewife. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So you can do both. It's just that um, usually that's the best place for women who aspire to be housewives. That's actually the best place to meet your husband because then you already know he's setting up he's setting himself up to be a provider and a producer. So, you know, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. You said that because I mentioned this on a previous episode when I was in Japan, I was having this conversation with this woman who, you know, lived in this very traditional community. Right. And, um, she said that a lot of women get really good grades, make it to really good schools and get really good jobs so they can find a husband at these executive like positions, marry them and then stay home. (laughs) I've, yeah, she said that. I was just like, wow. Yeah, People marry, people marry in proximity. You're typically going to marry the person that's closest to you. So if you go to college, you get a really good degree and it puts you in position to be near the type of man you want to marry. So if you want to marry an executive, a CEO, high powered man, you they're not falling out the sky. They're not growing on trees unless you get on the matchmakers database. You're going to have to really put yourself in proximity to them. And for the most uh, for the most part, the best way to meet your husband in that regard is at the office or bumble listen so here's the deal Uh, Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so no so here's here's the deal right like i think part of the reason why someone might i don't say that you know stay-at-home wives should not go to college but i think the reason why someone would say that is if we're subscribing to the idea that when you meet your man you're not going to be working it there's a lot of like I don't know, cost, time, energy that goes into going to school that's not going to be used for what most people use their education for is their livelihood, right? She she doesn't care. So she's wrapped her mind around the fact that this is just an investment into me meeting my husband. I got you, but I'm trying to figure out what that looks like. If I'm in calculus class, I'm thinking about how am I going to make use of this knowledge, right? That's me, right? I don't know what it's like for someone to be in physics saying, I can't wait to meet my man. Okay, square root of this. I can't wait to meet my man. Uh, You know, carry the two, carry the five. Okay, I got to submit this paper. Can't wait to meet my man. Let me me tell you how I don't know what that looks like. That looks like I'm looking at who's in the classroom, who's going to be the next Bill Gates, who's going to be the next Elon Musk, and I need to get him as a study partner. I don't care about any of this stuff. I just want to connect with the guy who may be the next Elon Musk, the next Bill Gates, the next Mark Zuckerberg, so that I can date him, enter into a romantic relationship, and we get married and have some babies. How do you succeed? At that? Tri- am I tripping? It's not about the. It's not about the education. She's only there to meet her husband. No, nah, she's. It. Yeah, she she she's speaking to how how other other cultures do. Like a, a lot of white women are trained that way to to do that. But I I think it's so foreign to us because like a, a lot of black women are not trained to do that. When black people think of tradition, we think about Big Mama. We think about the auntie. We think about you know a lot of these women didn't have didn't go to get that extra education. They may have been smart naturally, but they didn't have degrees. They stayed and had nine and ten and twelve kids and you know, raise, raise their families and their husband, you know, may have worked in a steel mill or something like that. So when a lot of us think of tradition, that's what we think of, but in other cultures, which I've you know come to find out in college and a lot of things like that, uh, especially, you know, white women, especially they are trained to go find their man in college. So what, what she's saying is right. It's just not common in our um, culture. I, I was in college. I was, well, I was, I was in college by the time I met my ex-husband, I was my freshman year in college. And 
Um, I was practicing pre-law. I wanted, I was going to be a lawyer, not necessarily wanted to be a lawyer, but you know, society has groomed us to where you, you can't just be a wife. You have to be something else. You have to make something of yourself. Although I knew since I was five years old, I wanted to be a wife and a mother and nothing else, Mm. but went to college. I met my husband while we were working at Arby's. We both were in college by the time we got married. And when I got pregnant, I dropped out and I was happy to do so. I did not care. I did not mind. I really was not focused on getting education. I was focused on possibly meeting my ex, my husband. Like this was going to be an avenue to which I met the man that I could build a solid marriage with. Here's a, a question. What what did that mindset get instilled from? In terms of five, you said at five years old, I knew I wanted to be a, a wife and a housewife. Where did that mindset come from? Uh, my grandmother. Watching my grandmother and my grandfather. Um, my parents were separated by then. So my mom was taking care of us by herself, essentially. Um, he had remarried someone else at that time. Um, but watching my grandmother and how she served, not just her husband, but she served the entire family. My grandmother had 10 kids and just watching and seeing how much her children loved her and doted on her. Her husband loved her. She just seemed so much more appreciated and loved versus the women who were working. Mm. Like even my aunt who was a stay home, stay at home wife, Um, she was loved by her children and doted on by her children. She was always there. She was always able to meet their needs. Whereas my mom working and watching my other aunts who were, they just, we were latchkey kids because our mothers worked. So I, I definitely didn't want that for my kids. See, I think it's, it's interesting that you saw that and went that way because I feel like most women would see that and develop a fear mindset, a fear based mindset. Right. You said, oh, my, my parents separated. So seeing that and seeing how that marriage situation happened, most people will look at that and say, OK, now nah, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to establish myself because I don't I don't want to end up, you know, uh, um, in a relationship that fails. And then I'm just out, you know, just out here. So it was interesting that you saw that you saw failed relationships right there in front of your face and still decided to invest your livelihood into a relationship that young. That, that's, that's just very interesting. It's not common at all. Yeah. Because it, I think like most people operate out of a fear based mind. As a matter of fact, like most, most parents, most sets of parents, men and women. Um, but you know, in the black community, it's a, it's a lot of single women. So single women, especially teaching their daughters, Hey, go out there and make sure that you, that you good. You don't need a man for anything, but fathers too. Fathers are saying, no, you don't need to depend on no man for nothing. I yeah. want you to go out there, get your degree, get your, you know what I'm saying? So women are almost in this era are raised to not trust men and to be selfish. Mm. Like it, it's, it's just, it's just part of the game. They get it from both sides. And again, most people operate out, out of a fear-based mindset. So for you to see that and go the opposite way, I think it, I mean, I, I, I think it's interesting. So let's, let's stay on that real quick. So you're saying that a lot of women are raising their daughters or a lot of men are raising their daughters to fear being in these relationships where they're dependent on men and so on and so forth. And it's creating this chasm where people are going on this fear-based mindset. What do you think happens when a man meets a woman today and they're dating? What do you think they're looking for now that does not reflect or maybe does reflect the traditional things that Letitia's talking about. Can I also say real quick sure. that um, my mother didn't raise me to want to be independent of a man and get it on my own. My mother, because she was having to do it because her and my father were no longer together, um, she wanted to make sure, she instilled in me that you make sure that you find, a, you, you, you don't have to do it on your own. You shouldn't have to do it on your own. You're a woman, um, especially if you're gonna have kids. You need to make sure that you find a man who is going to be competent and capable capable of taking care of the family. So um, that, that's something she always instilled. She's like, you're going to be with a man anyway. Just you're going to just make sure that he can be able to take care of his family. So, so I was never raised with a sense of fear of relationships and attaching myself or being dependent on a man. Well, I'm glad you, you create that clarification. 